Welcome, listeners. You're tuned into Generative History, and I'm your guide on this journey, Alex Integris. Whether you're a frequent companion or joining us for the first time, I'm thrilled you're here. In our previous episode, we delved into the fog-filled streets of the renowned survival horror franchise, Silent Hill. We explored the fear, the psychological underpinnings, and how it reshaped the genre. That trip down the rabbit hole of psychological terror was truly chilling, wasn't it? Well, today, we're moving from the spine-tingling fear of Silent Hill to an entirely different universe, one of high fantasy and epic quests. We are transitioning from nightmarish townscapes to the lore-rich expanse of the Forgotten Realms. Yes, my friends, we're embarking on an adventure through the beloved world of Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate, a title that rings out in video game history. It's an epic saga set in the Dungeons & Dragons universe, captivating millions of players across the globe with its immersive narrative and intricate gameplay. This game stands as a testament to how a virtual experience can transcend borders, bridging language and culture to create a shared narrative of heroism, moral complexity, and thrilling adventure. Our journey today takes us across the vast history of the Baldur's Gate franchise. We'll investigate its origins, dive into its rich lore, and meet the captivating characters that populate its world. The development process, challenges faced, and the successes celebrated all will be uncovered. Moreover, we'll discuss the cultural imprint of Baldur's Gate, examining its profound influence on the evolution of role-playing games and its ongoing impact on the genre. From the inaugural release in 1998 to the much-anticipated Baldur's Gate 3, we'll be exploring every facet of this remarkable franchise. So, prepare to journey with me, fellow adventurers, as we traverse the intricacies of the Baldur's Gate universe. Ready your gear, for this is an exploration you wouldn't want to miss. In the words of a famous Forgotten Realms adage, may your dice roll high. Baldur's Gate, its very name conjures up visions of high fantasy, stirring adventures, and rich, intricate storytelling. But the story of Baldur's Gate, both in its in-game lore and real-world creation, is as compelling as any tale spun within the game itself. Today, we're turning back the pages of history to the birth of this legendary franchise. Let's set the stage. It's the late 1990s. PC gaming is booming, with strategy games, first-person shooters, and flight simulators all the rage. But one genre is largely absent, the role-playing game, or RPG. Sure, there were exceptions. Who could forget Ultima Underworld or Betrayal at Krondor? Still, most RPGs at the time were text-based, not graphic-intensive. Enter Bioware, a fledgling Canadian game developer founded by a group of medical doctors who decided to trade stethoscopes for sprites. Bioware's founders, Ray Muzica, Greg Zeshuk, and Augustine Yip, initially cut their teeth on a mech combat game, Shattered Steel. While the game garnered a positive response, the team yearned to create something more profound, something that could deliver a rich, story-driven experience. They were avid fans of Dungeons & Dragons, a fantasy tabletop role-playing game first published in 1974. Dungeons & Dragons was a seminal creation by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. It invited players to imagine themselves as stalwart heroes, exploring dangerous dungeons, fighting monstrous creatures, and amassing treasure. More importantly, it focused on character development and narrative progression, things that Bioware yearned to bring into the digital gaming sphere. The decision to adapt Dungeons & Dragons into a video game wasn't an easy one. D&D was steeped in complex rules and game mechanics. Translating these elements into a computer game, ensuring that it was both accessible and enjoyable, was a Herculean task. But Bioware was undeterred. The potential to craft a sprawling digital playground, where players could live out their own high fantasy adventures, was too enticing. This led Bioware to partner with Black Isle Studios, the role-playing division of Interplay Entertainment. Interplay was well known for publishing other RPGs like Fallout, and had also acquired the license to create video games based on the D&D universe. Thus, the stage was set for the creation of Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate is actually a city within the Forgotten Realms, one of the many campaign settings within D&D. Named after the legendary hero Baldurin, the city is known for its prosperity and political influence. But it's also a hub for intrigue, ripe with secret plots, power struggles, and shadowy figures. In short, it was the perfect setting for a rich, narrative-driven RPG. Yet, crafting this universe into a computer game was fraught with challenges. How could Bioware translate the D&D rule set into a computer game? How could they render the rich detail of the Forgotten Realms into pixels? And, more importantly, how could they deliver a narrative experience as rich and immersive as a D&D campaign where players often created their own stories? These were questions that Bioware grappled with as they ventured forth into this ambitious project. Bioware's solution was an engine they called the Infinity Engine. 
This allowed for an isometric perspective that could depict the world of Baldur's Gate in beautiful, pre-rendered 2D backgrounds. The engine also allowed for real-time gameplay, with the ability to pause at any time, giving players the chance to strategize and control their party's actions in detail. It was a blend of real-time strategy and turn-based tactics, a novel approach at the time. As Bioware navigated these challenges, the world of gaming watched with bated breath. An RPG based on the beloved D&D franchise, with graphics and real-time gameplay, the expectations were sky-high. For Bioware, it was not just about crafting a game, it was about living up to the legacy of D&D and delivering an experience that players would cherish. It was a gamble, but one that Bioware was ready to take. And so, with the partnership of Black Isle Studios, the guidance of the D&D rules, and the ambition of Bioware, work began on Baldur's Gate. This was the beginning of a journey that would eventually redefine the RPG genre, shape the future of Bioware, and leave an indelible mark on the world of gaming. But the road ahead was long and fraught with trials. A core aspect of Baldur's Gate's allure comes from its setting within the Forgotten Realms, a detailed and dynamic world within the D&D multiverse. The world of Faron, the main continent in the Forgotten Realms, is brimming with vibrant cities, treacherous dungeons, mystical forests, and an array of cultures and races. The city of Baldur's Gate itself is a bustling metropolis, rich in history and filled with intrigues. In the game, the players begin their journey in Candlekeep, an imposing fortress overflowing with knowledge, home to one of the most complete libraries in all of Faron. This location is significant, as it emphasizes the importance of knowledge and lore within the Forgotten Realms setting. The history of the Forgotten Realms and the lands of Faron is vast, often involving mighty empires, destructive wars, and the meddling of gods. Our protagonist is a living testament to this divine meddling. The narrative of Baldur's Gate revolves around the Balspawn saga. The protagonist is a Balspawn, a child of Bal, the god of murder. The implications of such lineage are far-reaching, setting in motion a series of events that encompass the entire Baldur's Gate saga. The Forgotten Realms are home to many gods and goddesses, each with their unique domains and dogmas, who play an active role in the lives of mortals. In the saga, the consequences of a power vacuum left by the death of Baal and the impending prophecy of the return of the Lord of Murder bring a palpable sense of urgency and a deep personal connection to the lore for players. Moreover, the rich tapestry of companions the player can recruit on their journey further deepens the connection to the world and its lore. Each character, like the dashing swashbuckler, Driz Darden, or the snide and complex mage, Edwin Otisaren, brings another piece of Farron to life through their unique perspectives and intricate personal stories. In the Baldur's Gate series, the Forgotten Realms are not just a backdrop but a living, breathing entity with a history that is continuously unfolding and a future that is being influenced by the actions of the player. The entwining of gameplay and the rich history of Forgotten Realms creates a powerful immersive experience that has been a significant factor in the Baldur's Gate series' success. All right, listeners, with the stage set, it's time to delve into the fascinating world of Baldur's Gate's development and the game that it became. This, my friends, is where the magic happened. Founded in 1995 by a trio of newly minted doctors who decided they would rather develop games than practice medicine, Bioware was a fledgling company when it took on the gargantuan task of Baldur's Gate. Despite their inexperience in the gaming industry, Ray Muzica, Greg Zeshuk, and Augustine Yip had a vision. They wanted to bring the vast, intricate world of Dungeons and Dragons to the digital arena in a way that had never been done before. The first hurdle they faced was translating the advanced D&D 2nd edition ruleset into a video game. That's right, folks, we're talking about a rulebook that's more like a brick than a pamphlet. It's complex, detailed, and all-encompassing. Converting that level of complexity into a playable, understandable video game was a Herculean task, but our intrepid developers were undeterred. To accomplish this, BioWare developed the Infinity Engine. It was an innovative piece of technology for its time, capable of simulating the dense mechanics of D&D. It handled calculations and systems that would have been impossible to manage manually, thus paving the way for the intricate gameplay Baldur's Gate would come to be known for. But the complexities didn't stop at rule sets. Oh no, the world of Baldur's Gate was intended to be expansive and immersive, offering players the chance to explore hundreds of unique locations. Imagine, dear listeners, the work that went into designing each environment, each character, each quest. It was a feat of extraordinary magnitude, but Bioware rose to the occasion, creating a world that was as expansive as it was fascinating. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. Baldur's Gate was a blend of strategy and roleplay, a hybrid that was, in many ways, ahead of its time. 
players were given the ability to pause the game, issue orders, and then watch as the actions played out, offering a strategic depth that added layers of complexity to the combat. It was a system that brought the tactical considerations of a D&D &D game to life within the digital sphere, making every combat encounter a potential chess match. And what would Baldur's Gate be without its motley crew of companions? Each of the game's characters had a unique backstory, quests, and personality traits that made them feel alive. From the stalwart paladin Ajandis to the mischievous thief Amon, and who could forget the unforgettable duo of Minsk and his miniature giant space hamster, Boo. These characters weren't simply game mechanics, they were friends that we came to care for, and that is a testament to the storytelling prowess of Baldur's Gate. Speaking of the story, we simply cannot overlook the epic tale that Baldur's Gate spun. It's a story filled with mystery, intrigue, and plot twists that kept players on the edge of their seats. From escaping Candlekeep to discovering the truth of the protagonist's heritage, the narrative journey of Baldur's Gate is one for the ages. Upon its release in 1998, Baldur's Gate was lauded for its narrative depth, its strategic gameplay, and the sheer scope of its world. The game didn't merely succeed, it set the bar for future RPGs. It revitalized the interest in D&D-themed video games and created a legacy that continues to this day. Folks, we've barely scratched the surface of the magic that is Baldur's Gate. As we delve deeper into the series, you'll discover just how impactful this game truly was. But for now, let's take a moment to appreciate the monumental achievement that is the original Baldur's Gate. Alright, folks, having charted the game's creation and its gameplay intricacies, it's time to unpack the colossal impact of Baldur's Gate on the world of gaming and beyond. When Baldur's Gate hit the shelves in December 1998, it wasn't just a game. It was a revelation. This was a time when the gaming landscape was dominated by action-oriented, real-time games. Turn-based strategy, the genre that Baldur's Gate belonged to, was considered to be on the decline. But Baldur's Gate defied the odds and won over both gamers and critics. From the moment it was released, the game was met with critical acclaim. Reviewers praised its depth, its complexity, and its narrative brilliance. The immersive world of the Forgotten Realms, previously reserved for those who poured over D&D &D rulebooks and sourcebooks, had been brought to life for everyone to experience. The game quickly garnered a dedicated fanbase and sales soared. Baldur's Gate sold over 2 million copies worldwide, making it a massive commercial success. But more than just its commercial achievement, the game transformed the landscape of RPGs forever. Baldur's Gate was a benchmark. It showed game developers everywhere what was possible when you dared to dream big and refused to cut corners on quality. The way Baldur's Gate married complex strategy with immersive role-playing set a new standard. The pause and play mechanic was imitated by numerous RPGs that followed. You could see its influence in later games like Dragon Age and Mass Effect, also Bioware's creations, and other titles like Pillars of Eternity and Divinity Original Sin. These games all have a part of Baldur's Gate in their DNA. Even the game's approach to companions has been replicated in numerous RPGs. Instead of merely being a set of stats and skills, companions in Baldur's Gate had unique personalities, motivations, and story arcs. Today, we take for granted that our digital companions will have their own stories to tell, their personal quests to undertake. But back then, it was revolutionary. Baldur's Gate showed us that these digital characters could be more than pixels on a screen. They could be our friends, our allies, our betrayers. Its influence extends even outside of the gaming world. As a pioneer of video game storytelling, Baldur's Gate paved the way for the recognition of video games as a valid and powerful medium for narrative. It helped to solidify the role of games as a form of art, a form of interactive storytelling that was just as capable of evoking emotions and conveying complex narratives as books, movies, or TV shows. And let's not forget, Baldur's Gate made Dungeons & Dragons cool again. The game's success revitalized interest in the tabletop game and introduced a whole new generation to the wonders of the Forgotten Realms. It didn't just bring D&D to the masses, it also brought the masses back to D&D. Today, Baldur's Gate stands as a classic, a milestone in the history of video games. Its influence can be felt in every corner of the RPG genre, and its legacy continues to live on. It's a testament to the passion, creativity, and perseverance of its creators, and it holds a special place in the hearts of countless gamers around the world. In the next part of our journey, we'll explore how Bioware took everything that made Baldur's Gate great and pushed it to new heights with the release of Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am. But for now, let's reflect on the original Baldur's Gate, a game that not only broke the mold but also built a new one in its wake. Many aspects of Baldur's Gate that we've already touched upon can be seen influencing later RPGs. Remember when I mentioned the Infinity Engine? 
This was the technical marvel that BioWare built specifically for Baldur's Gate, and it set a standard for future games in terms of scope and detail. The detailed 2D isometric view and sprawling interactive environments were unseen before in RPGs. This engine not only powered Baldur's Gate but was also utilized in other significant games like Planescape, Torment and the Icewind Dale series. Then there was the dialogue system. Bioware put a lot of effort into creating dialogue that was meaningful and complex, with branching storylines based on the player's choices. This level of depth and interaction was extraordinary and lent to the game's immersive quality. It's no surprise to see this dialogue choice system become a staple in RPGs, influencing future games from Fallout to The Witcher and, of course, Bioware's own future franchises. Moreover, the success of Baldur's Gate added momentum to the computer RPG revival of the late 90s and early 2000s. Games like Planescape, Torment, Icewind Dale, and Neverwinter Nights owe a great deal to Baldur's Gate for proving that there was a market for these types of in-depth, narrative-driven games. In a cultural sense, Baldur's Gate was transformative. Its success showcased the appetite for rich, detailed worlds and complex narratives within video games. It helped in demonstrating that video games could be a legitimate storytelling medium, pushing the envelope on what was considered possible within the gaming industry. It began a trend towards more mature and intricate storytelling, paving the way for a whole generation of story-driven games. And it wasn't just in the gaming world where the cultural impact was felt. The popularity of Baldur's Gate, with its adherence to D&D &D mechanics, brought the tabletop RPG into mainstream consciousness. It helped remove some of the stigma associated with playing D&D &D and showcase the depth and complexity that a tabletop RPG could offer. The franchise, therefore, had a part to play in the renaissance of D&D &D that we've seen in recent years. Now, it's nearly impossible to talk about RPGs without referencing Baldur's Gate in some capacity. It stands as an example of the heights that video games can achieve and serves as a constant source of inspiration for game developers worldwide. The impact of Baldur's Gate has been nothing short of revolutionary. Even today, its influence continues to resonate, illustrating just how groundbreaking this game truly was. Now, as groundbreaking as the original Baldur's Gate was, its sequel Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am managed to step it up even further. But we'll get to that in the next section. Alright, listeners, if you thought the first game was a doozy, then you're in for a real treat with the sequel, Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am. Just two years after the first game, Bioware pulled off another massive success that arguably surpassed the original in many aspects. The development process was a remarkable endeavor that shed light on the potential of this franchise. When it comes to the game's development, Bioware didn't just rest on their laurels. They understood that to live up to the hype, they had to push the boundaries of what was expected in a role-playing game. While the original game set the groundwork for what a computer-based RPG could be, Shadows of Am took it a step further by focusing on narrative depth and character development. And man, did they succeed. Understandably, with such a successful first game, expectations were high for Baldur's Gate 2. Bioware faced the challenge of meeting and surpassing these expectations head-on. But they didn't buckle under the pressure. Rather, they used it to fuel their creative process, and the result was a game that was expansive, engaging, and immersive. Baldur's Gate 2 built upon the gameplay mechanics of the first game, but with noticeable improvements and refinements. The game world was bigger, the quests were more complex, and the characters were even more fleshed out. If you thought the original game was vast, Shadows of Am was a sprawling universe that was teeming with life and opportunities for exploration. From a gameplay perspective, the sequel introduced a host of new mechanics and systems. There were more classes, races, and abilities for characters, and players had even more freedom in how they approached quests and combats. The combat system was refined, and the integration of real-time and turn-based elements became even smoother. The storyline was a significant aspect where Baldur's Gate 2 really stood out. It built upon the first game's plot, yet introduced a new central villain, John Ironicus, a powerful and complex antagonist whose motives and backstory become clearer as the game progresses. This time around, the story was darker, more complex, and incredibly engaging. Speaking of the characters, Bioware made sure they were more than just NPCs in the game. Each one was a fully realized individual with their own backstory, personality, and motivations. This made the player's connection with these characters much more profound, whether they were party members, villains, or other NPCs. Shadows of Am managed to receive critical acclaim, just like its predecessor, but also garnered even more admiration from the gaming community. It was lauded for its immersive gameplay, in-depth characters, and a compelling storyline that left players on the edge of their seats. 
But, the story of Baldur's Gate doesn't stop there. As with any successful franchise, there came expansions, enhanced editions, and even some spin-offs. And we will delve into these, and how they contributed to the legacy of Baldur's Gate in the next section. Picture this. It's 1999 and you've spent countless hours adventuring through the Sword Coast. You've battled nefarious villains, delved into mysterious dungeons, and quaffed more potions than you can shake a stick at. And just when you think you've seen all there is to see, Bioware drops Tales of the Sword Coast onto your gaming plate, an expansion to the original Baldur's Gate. Tales of the Sword Coast was not just about extending playtime. It was about exploration, about adding new depth to the rich tapestry of the Forgotten Realm setting. New areas like the werewolf-infested island of Olgoth's beard and the labyrinthine Durlag's tower sprung into existence, brimming with fresh narratives to experience and enemies to conquer. By increasing the level cap and introducing fresh quests, the expansion added more than just extra game time, it deepened the strategic elements of gameplay, allowing for more complex character builds and team dynamics. The challenges in these new areas often required strategic planning, deepening the tactical gameplay that players had come to love in the original. Fast forward to 2001, in the wake of Baldur's Gate 2, and Bioware was at it again with the release of Throne of Ball. The stakes were higher this time, as Throne of Ball was designed to offer closure to the saga of the Ballspawn, and boy did it deliver. In Throne of Ball, we were thrown into epic battles against demigods and dastardly wizards, all while grappling with the harsh realities of our divine lineage. It introduced high-level abilities, adding another layer to the tactical combat, and gave us one of the most elaborate dungeons the series had ever seen in the form of Watcher's Keep. Throne of Ball elevated the Baldur's Gate experience from great to legendary. With these expansions came the dawn of spin-offs as well, introducing new perspectives and approaches to the Baldur's Gate formula. One such title that stands out is Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance. Launched in 2001, Dark Alliance strayed from the strategic, isometric perspective, embracing a more action-oriented approach with a focus on real-time combat and cooperative gameplay. While it was a departure from the core series, it maintained the rich world-building and narrative elements that were signatures of the franchise. Baldur's Gate, Dark Alliance was a game that captured the imaginations of console gamers, marking a departure from the PC-exclusive roots of the series. It used the power of consoles like the PlayStation 2 and Xbox to offer a different way to experience the world of the Forgotten Realms, one that appealed to a broader audience. But let's not forget about Icewind Dale and Planescape, Torment, two spiritual siblings of the Baldur's Gate series. While they take place in different locales within the Forgotten Realms and Multiverse, they carried forward Bioware's legacy of rich narratives and deep, tactical combat. In fact, these games were also later given the remastered treatment by Beamdog, which segues us nicely into the topic of enhanced editions. Now, let's talk about those enhanced editions, because they're a critical part of the Baldur's Gate story. In 2012, the Canadian company Beamdog, founded by former Bioware lead programmer Trent Oster, began releasing enhanced editions of the classic Baldur's Gate games, and later, their spiritual siblings. Starting with Baldur's Gate, Enhanced Edition, these versions not only brought compatibility with modern systems and higher resolution support, but also added new content, new characters, improved multiplayer support, and a whole slew of bug fixes. This was not just a fresh coat of paint, but a true restoration project. In the case of Baldur's Gate, the Enhanced Edition added three new recruitable characters with their unique quests, as well as a whole new adventure called the Black Pits, where you engage in gladiatorial battles. But perhaps the most significant improvement was the reworked interface, which made the games much more accessible to new players, yet remained familiar to the veterans. And the same was done for Baldur's Gate 2 and its expansion, with new characters and a second The Black Pits campaign. It's worth noting that the Enhanced Editions also packaged the base games with their respective expansion packs, making them the definitive editions to own. I think it's crucial to acknowledge Beamdog's work. Their dedication helped preserve and revitalize the Baldur's Gate series for a new generation of players, and kept the love for these classic RPGs alive and well. Among the spin-offs, we have Baldur's Gate Siege of Dragonspear, a game developed by Beamdog. 
Siege of Dragonspear serves as a narrative bridge between the original Baldur's Gate and its sequel, Baldur's Gate 2. It introduces new characters, expands on existing ones, and adds a significant chunk of story to further immerse players into the Forgotten Realms. Its intention was to fill the narrative gap that was not clearly explained in the original games, a sort of connective tissue, if you will. Then there's also the curious case of Baldur's Gate 3, The Black Hound. This was a game that was planned but, unfortunately, never came to fruition. The Black Hound was meant to be a departure from the original storyline, set in a different region of the Forgotten Realms, with all new characters. Due to various factors, including a shift in the video game market and internal issues at Interplay, the game was ultimately cancelled. Despite not being completed, The Black Hound left its mark on the Baldur's Gate franchise, as its intriguing premise stirred discussion and speculation among the fanbase for years. Its cancellation underscored the volatile nature of the gaming industry, where even beloved franchises are not immune to difficulties. But even amid these tribulations, the Baldur's Gate franchise has persisted and continues to engage both old and new fans alike, ensuring its position as one of the most influential RPG series to date. And now, dear listeners, the stage is set for the grand revival of this franchise that is Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3, the much-anticipated sequel to a series cherished by RPG and Dungeons and Dragons aficionados, is crafted by the talented hands at Larian Studios. The journey towards the resurrection of this renowned franchise is a testament to the resilience and love that fans and developers alike harbor for the series. The decision to entrust Larian Studios with this colossal task was a strategic move by the IP holder, Wizards of the Coast. This studio's previous success with the Divinity series gave them the credibility and expertise needed to bring such a treasured IP back into the limelight. And while the original endeavor by Black Isle Studios sadly faltered, it was Larian Studios that kindled a new hope for the franchise. The promise of Baldur's Gate 3 lies in its richly woven mechanics and gameplay systems. An intricate turn-based combat system echoes the strategic depth of the tabletop game it is based on. It's not merely about hitting the enemy, the environment, player positioning, and even the elements come into play, offering countless tactical possibilities. In a nod to the series' RPG roots, character creation in Baldur's Gate 3 is exhaustive. The classes range from the divine healers, the clerics, and the durable fighters, to the stealthy rangers, nimble rogues, and the magically gifted wizards, with more being introduced as the game evolves. Each class offers unique abilities and potential playstyles, encouraging players to experiment and find what best suits their strategy. In terms of races, you're spoiled for choice. From the elusive wood elves and the robust dwarves to the mystical tieflings and the versatile humans, each race comes with its own strengths, weaknesses, and unique interactions within the world. These choices directly influence your narrative experience and character development, further enhancing the game's replayability. Larian Studios has also taken a bold step forward in the realm of character interactions. Introducing a nuanced romance system, players can forge intimate bonds with their companions. Each of the companions comes with an origin story that profoundly influences their behaviors, preferences, and attitudes. Not only does this deepen the game's narrative, but it also has tangible gameplay implications. Depending on your decisions, relationships can bloom into love, transform into deep friendships, or sour into rivalries. The character dynamics are fluid, complex, and deeply personal. Companion origin stories are integral to the narrative fabric of Baldur's Gate 3. These origins are unique backstories that determine a companion's motivations, goals, and perspectives. For instance, the Githyanki warrior Liesel seeks to rid herself of an alien parasite, while the vampire Spawn Astarian wrestles with an insatiable dark urge. These origins add emotional weight to the companions, making them more than just combat tools, they become characters you can empathize with, love, or despise. The game's narrative promises an epic tale worthy of its D&D heritage. It's about a group of survivors implanted with a parasitic tadpole, which gives them remarkable abilities but also threatens to transform them into mind flayers. Their struggle to find a cure while dealing with the consequences of their newfound powers sets the stage for a riveting story. Player choices will heavily influence the narrative direction and the world state, underlining the power of player agency that is fundamental to the Baldur's Gate series. Set to release on PC, Mac, and PS5, with discussions for additional platforms ongoing, Baldur's Gate 3 has confirmed full controller support and split-screen co-opus. These features mean that two players can journey together on the same device, sharing the excitement and the risks. Additionally, the game supports cross-save progression between PC, Mac, and PS5, a milestone for an RPG of this scale. 
As the August release date inches closer, the anticipation among fans is palpable. Larian Studios, with its deep understanding and respect for the source material, is poised to deliver an RPG experience that pushes boundaries in terms of immersion and player choice. With a vibrant, detailed world, intricate gameplay mechanics, and a deeply personal narrative, Baldur's Gate 3 is more than just the future of the franchise, it is shaping up to be a landmark in RPG gaming. As we reach the end of our deep dive into the revered Baldur's Gate series, one can't help but marvel at the game's enduring appeal and their indelible imprint on video game history. From its humble beginnings in the late 90s to the much-awaited release of Baldur's Gate 3, the series has remained a beacon for RPG fans around the world, standing as a testament to the power of intricate storytelling, memorable characters, and deep, tactical gameplay. The original Baldur's Gate was a trailblazer for Western RPGs, marrying the depth of Dungeons & Dragons mechanics with an interactive world brimming with narratives. Its mix of open-world exploration, tactical combat, and meaningful player choices was something of a revelation, laying the groundwork for many RPGs that came after it. The tale of the Ballspawn, our player character, not only pushed the boundaries of narrative but became an integral part of video game lore. Then came Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Am, with a story that delved deeper into the protagonist's heritage, weaving a tale of godly lineage and personal destiny. Expanding on the foundation laid by its predecessor, it elevated the genre further and solidified its place among the greatest RPGs of all time. Its expansion, Throne of Ball, brought the saga to a fitting end, marking a triumphant conclusion to an epic journey. And now, we stand on the precipice of a new chapter. Baldur's Gate 3, currently in development by Larian Studios, brings the franchise into the modern era of gaming while staying true to its roots. It is shaping up to be a worthy successor, carrying forward the legacy of its forebears while pushing the envelope in terms of immersion and player agency. Yet, the core essence of Baldur's Gate, the one that has captured and retained the hearts of players for decades, remains the combination of rich lore, compelling narratives, complex characters, and a world that reacts to player decisions. This is what sets the Baldur's Gate series apart from others and ensures its timeless appeal. Now, dear listeners, it's your turn. We would love to hear your experiences and memories of Baldur's Gate. Was it your first RPG, or did you come to it later? Which characters have stayed with you after all these years? Did you play as a virtuous paladin, a cunning rogue, or perhaps a powerful sorcerer? Share your epic stories of bravery, cunning, and maybe even a touch of mischievous thievery. Do you have a favorite spell, a critical moment, or an unforgettable quest? And what are you most excited about for Baldur's Gate 3? Our inbox is open, and we are eagerly waiting to hear your Baldur's Gate journey. Share your stories with us on Twitter at Alex Integras or send us an email at generativehistory at gmail.com. In the immortal words of Minsk from Baldur's Gate, go for the eyes, boo. So, let's delve into this rich world together, and remember, every hamster has his day. Just as we've traveled through the rich history of the Baldur's Gate series, our next journey will take us to another corner of the gaming world. Brace yourselves, listeners, for an adventure into the post-apocalyptic landscapes of the Fallout franchise. From the retro-futuristic vibes of 1950s America to the captivating narratives intertwined with moral choices and thrilling combat, we'll explore it all. So, gather your Pip-Boys and rad -X and join us as we discuss the vault life, roam the wastelands, and reminisce about the impactful stories that have defined this legendary series. Stay tuned, follow us, and remember, war. War never changes.